Okay, today I'm going to create the bottom half of my armor again. Uh, you're creating the bottom half of your armor, so you can do it, you know, using the techniques that you learn in these videos, the tricks and such. Uh, and just use these videos as, you know, a way or a guide to see how I do mine. So when you make yours, and hopefully yours will be different, uh, you'll know how to make something completely unique and have some, you know, some tricks and techniques to making armors and working with different things like cloth and cylinders. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import the UMP body. So I'm going to go to import from my import list. I'm going to drop it down, go to UMP custom armors, go to data, meshes, base body mesh, female body underscore zero, select open. I want the skeleton. Select import. All right, now I need to go ahead and hide the skeleton. So I'm going to select my body, right click, and select hide unselected. And I want to freeze it so I don't screw it up. So I'm going to right click on it, go ahead and freeze selection. So now it's frozen. All right, I'm going to go up here to my front view pane, hit Alt W, and I'm going to create a line so I can make this cloth. So I'm going to select the shapes, select line. You guys should know how to do this. We did it in a previous tutorial. And go ahead and create your, uh, you know, your basic shape of your undergarment. All right, I'm going to use. I'm going way up here to the top because I want a gravity. You know, I'm worried about gravity, and I want it to form really kind of revealing around the um, crotch area of my armor. I like to make skimpy armors. Sorry, it's what I prefer doing. <laughs> so sue me. Anyways. Uh, don't sue me, but <laughs> go ahead and create your line. And notice what I did here. I created a strap on both sides around the neck. So, you know, the gravity is going to grab a hold of these shoulders whenever I create the cloth. All right after you've formed your basic line, uh, you want to kind of create symmetry on both sides of these shoulders. And I'm going to right click on the screen to get rid of the line creation. Right click again. I'm going to select uh, clone. I'm going to create a copy of it. Select OK. Now I'm going to right click on the screen and select rotate so I can rotate the line I just created. On the Z, I'm going to go by 180 and I'm going to press enter. That'll rotate it. Now I'm going to go to my modify pane. I'm going to click on the vertices and I'm going to try to match them up on, on this side. So I'm going to zoom in, right click, select move. Don't rotate your vertices, that would be bad. And try to move things around. Anytime you screw up in 3DS, you can always hit Alt Z and that'll take you back you know, a step. Usually it will. And if it doesn't, then you got to start over. It's really annoying. But anyways, just line up your vertices as best you can. You know, line up these vertices to the other side as best you can. That doesn't have to be perfect because we're actually going to cut this in half and use a mirror modifier symmetry. So you know, the it'll be identical on both sides, which I'll show you here in a bit. All right, now once you have your vertices lined up, you want to go ahead and deselect vertex. Right click on your uh, screen and select rotate. Now we're going to rotate it back to zero. Go ahead and select that and go back to zero. Now I'm right click, go to move, and I want to zoom out a little bit and kind of move them over to the side so I have some room to work with them. Alrighty. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach these lines together. So select attach and use the handcuffs and attach them together. Then deselect attach, select vertex, drag across all of them and break them in the geometry. Now all the vertices are broken. I'm going to deselect vertex. I'm going to use my modifier pane, drop it down, and I'm going to select uh, Garment Maker. All right, with Garment Maker selected, I'm going to drop down the little panel. I'm going to select panels. I'm going to move the panels back over in front of the body. And just try to get them right back where you had them before. You'll probably have to zoom in and try to line it up. They're not going to match perfectly, but you want to try to get them right back where you had them. That's pretty close there. It's decent enough. All right, I'm going to hit Alt W on my screen. Go to my perspective, hit Alt W. Go up here to perspect or to realistic. Drop that down and select hidden line. And now we're ready to move these panels. All right, now I'm going to move these panels in front of the body. I'm sure you guys remember how to do all this. So grab one of the panels, move it in front, grab the other panel, and I'm going to go around to the back and I'm going to move it in the back. Now I know that, uh, don't worry, because I'm only going to be using the bottom half of this cloth. I'm not going to use all this stuff up here. I'm just forming it up here so I can gra use the gravity here to latch onto the body to get a really good cloth shape. There are better programs, much better programs for creating cloth, and I'll talk about those in the future. So. I uh, 
get it pretty close to the body you know you want to get it fairly decently close and again this is the back side of the UV because it's darker and if you go around to the front that's the front side that's what we want to paint on so I need to rotate the one in the front so I select it right click select rotate and in the Z I'm going to rotate it by 180 now I'm going to select seams I'm going to go over here kind of zoom in a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and select some scenes so I select this line here like this line here and select create seam and you want to do the same thing on the other side go ahead and go over there deselect the seams you had before then hold down control and select two more seams select create deselect the seams go to the bottom and create two seams on the bottom as well create seam uh oh they're crisscross so I have to hit reverse seam and deselect them now my seams are created. Again, if you get a pop-up that happens when you try to create a seam, you just have to increase the seam tolerance. Just raise this number up until you don't get that error. All right, all my seams are created. Select Garment Maker, drop it down, and I want to add a cloth modifier. So select cloth. Right-click on your screen at this point and go ahead and unfreeze all to unfreeze the body. Now in the object properties, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to add an object. I'm going to select the slim uh, push up UMP, select add, and I want to go to collision. I'm going to set mine to 0.5. You can play around with this collision to get it closer, but I think 0.5 is fine because you can always move it closer later after the cloth is created. All right, then go to line, select cloth, drop down the presets, and I like to use spandex because they're really good presets. So once those are set up, I go to OK. That's good, and I'm going to go ahead and simulate it. Uh-oh, I forgot to remove the seams. Remember those seams? i got to get rid of those. So if you ever have this happen, you would select uh, Simulate Local to unhighlight it. And then if you want to reset it, you just go down here to Reset State, and that puts it back the way it was before. Now I'm going to remove Use Sewing Springs so they don't show, and I'm going to go ahead and Simulate Local again. Give it a minute. And once this looks pretty steady down here, I'm going to remove the simulate local. I'm going to check out the mesh that grade. Best way to check it out is go up to hidden line and turn it to realistic. Remember, I'm only keeping this bottom half, so that's the only part I care about. I don't care about the top half. It looks pretty decent. All right, I can work with that. So once I'm done creating my cloth, I'll probably have to move some vertices down right here. I can see already. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it, convert it to an editable poly. Now because we added a cloth modifier, it also added it to the body, so you have to select the body, right click on cloth, and delete it. Alright, now we're going to select this editable poly that we have here, this new undergarment, and I'm going to go ahead and make some modifications to it. First thing I want to do is I want to slice off the part of it that I want to keep, which I'm possibly only going to be keeping uh, from here down because I'm going to have a belt that's going to cover up the part of it that uh, isn't showing. Uh, so let's see here. I'm um, going to go ahead and go back up here from realistic. I'm going to drop this box down and go to hidden line. And I want to select the body again. I'm going to freeze it. So freeze the body. Now with this selected, what I want to do is I want to go over, go over here to uh, I want to relax it first to kind of pull it out a bit. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to select the element tool. I'll select the front. And I'm going to select uh, you know both sides of it. And I'm going to go over here. Kind of zoom in on the butt is a good area to look at when you're hitting relax. And go ahead and hit relax. And see what that did? It kind of smoothed it out a little bit. You don't want to hit this too many times. Like three or four times is like the most you ever want to use this. If you do it more than that, it's not going to turn out to I'll hit relax one more time. And I'm going to right click on it, go to convert to editable poly. Alright, now I want to move those vertices out, so I'm going to use my vertex uh, selection. Go over here to where it's poking through, select the vertex close to where it's poking through, uh, and then right click, select move, but I don't want to move just one vertex. So I want to go over here to, uh, I'm sorry, soft selection, drop that down. You know how to do this. And I only need to move a few, so I'm just going to select three maybe. Uh, maybe take that up to a five. Try to get something really close to that area. Five looks pretty good. And then on the Z, I'm just going to move it down a little bit. And I don't want to move this one. I'm going to move this one instead. Something near my little problem area. And you just move a few vertexes so you can get it off of right there. I'm just using Z to move it down to where it's not poking through anymore. Right, that looks good. Let me go to realistic and see how that turned out. 
It doesn't look stupid or anything, so it looks fine. Uh-oh, poking through in the front a little bit, so maybe grab right here. Sometimes whenever you do this, you'll have parts poking through, and naturally you know how to fix them. You just move vertices. Now, if I look at it, it's not asymmetrical. One side is kind of different than the other, and I'm going to show you how to use a tool uh, to reflect one side or the other. But first, let's cut off the part that we need so we're not working with too much and you know making it take way too much time to do this. So I'm just going to cut off the part that I want to keep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to my element tool and with both the front and the back side selected, because remember this is two planes, you got the front plane and you have the back plane. So with both sides selected, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to remove my soft selection, I'm going to drop this window down, and in edit geometry you have a little tool here called slice plane. I'm going to select that slice plane. Now if I scroll out, you can see that there's this yellow box now. Think of this yellow box like a guillotine. If I click slice, it's going to cut you know, right in everything like a straight line between this top part, this here, and from here to here. It's just going to cut every polygon in between that. I don't want to cut it this way. I want to cut it you know, at a different angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that yellow box by right-clicking and selecting rotate. Now, which axis do I want to move it on? Well, I can select, well, I want it to rotate this way, you know, so I can see that that's on the X axis. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control-Z to put it back where it was, and on the X, I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. There we go, now it's up and down. Now I'm going to move it closer to the area that I want to cut it at. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to drag it down, and I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to go for realistic. I'm going to go to hidden line so I can see exactly what's getting cut. Now if I zoom in, you can see the line that's going to get cut. See, if I move this now, you can see exactly where it's going to cut it. Ah, got some air in my stomach today. All right, so where do I want to cut it? All right, well, I like making skimpy armor, so I'm going to cut mine pretty close, pretty low. But I also need enough to go underneath a belt, so go up maybe a little higher. And I don't want the back to be at the same angle as the front, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to select Rotate. I'm going to rotate this cut a little bit. Maybe go like that. And how's that look in the back now? Now maybe move it up a little bit. So you just position this box using your move and your rotate tool. So you can get enough covered. So OK, that's enough of uh, the parts that I want to keep. I want to keep everything from that line down. All right, so I'm just setting the line up to where you know, it's exactly where I want to cut it. As soon as you set your line up, you go over here and you click slice. It just cut it on both sides. Now I'm done cutting it. I'm going to deselect slice plane and now I need to select the polygons that I want to keep. So, or actually the polygons I don't want to keep. So I'm going to select polygon. The polygon tool. I'm going to deselect all. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to zoom way in. You really want to get close with this. I'm going to select all the polygons. Now I don't want to move anything so I should probably right click and use my select tool so nothing moves. I'm going to select all the polygons that are, I'm going to detach. Basically, you're just detaching. So I'm selecting polygons so I can delete them. So with all those polygons selected, uh, see how I got them all selected? I kept everything. I didn't select any polygons below the line because I want to keep that part. I just selected polygons above the line because I don't want to keep those. So then I just select those and I hit delete. All right, I'll see you here in a second in the next video.